draw conclusions. And what that does, it gives us a little insight of the people that was here and what was going on in the Ozarks when our explorer schoolcraft come walking up this valley, went around the corner and wrote a full chapter about our cave in it. He referred to this as the Valley of the Cave, came back by a few days later, and for the rest of his days, he continually recounted his trip to the Valley of the Cave. Now when he saw it, he said he wanted to shout. Below that he wrote, we seem suddenly to be beholding some secret of the great works of nature which has been hid from the foundation of the world. I know that's a lot of words, but he had a lot of cave up here to describe too. Opening in front of us is 55 foot high and 100 foot wide. Just inside on the left hand wall you'll see black stains, you'll see the floor is black too. That is all charcoal, soot, and ash stains from thousands of years of campfire. That'd be fires kept by pioneers, settlers, Civil War soldiers, Osage, Cat, Old Bluff dwellers, and then a couple Frenchies stayed in the cave too. There's no telling. Little cave up on the right, we named that one Disappointment because it does not go anywhere. It just looks like it does. <laughs> now, a photographer came here and set a camera up on the rock ledge in front of Disappointment there, put it on a tripod, and he took a picture of pioneers lined up on the other side there. And that photo became a full page in National Geographic, 97 years ago, we get our best stories from her and her younger sister, Miss Harriet. Harriet, there's a picture of her sitting on that marker tree. You'll see when you go back in 1941. I'm not going to tell her age because she's still around. It's just not nice to tell a lady's age, you know. <laughs> but Catherine, her first childhood memories right here when she was four, 97 years ago. <laughs> you know what, Catherine's okay with that. You know what, matter of fact, we had her 100th birthday party here at the cave a couple of years ago. We hope to have her 102nd this September. I told you even what day she's going to get older, didn't I? That's okay. When you get to 100, it's fine. Now, Catherine, she knew the descendants of the Cherokee that lived in this cave before the Trail of Tears. I mentioned the Osage lost the population, left a void here in the Ozarks. When that void left here... Well, you know what? The Ozark is always a place folks can kind of go and disappear, and there's a lot of families back east throwed off their farm showed up here. They started moving out here to the Ozarks. That would include Kickapoo, Cherokee, Seminole, Choctaw, Delaware. The Ozarks showed up with all kinds of folks, and then we freaked bunch of the folks nobody liked showed up. The Germans and the Irish. Yep, they wandered in the Ozarks about that same time, and married up with all them Indians, and that's where Ozark culture began, right there. That's why it's hard to find an old time when the Ozarks are not part Indian, German, and Irish. No wonder we're so mixed up around here. That's why everybody wants to be us, isn't it? We're special. Now, Catherine, she also knew the Smallin family, remember? That's who this cave was named after. Ironic name, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But anyway, Catherine, she said every Sunday after church, her daddy would load the family up in a buckboard wagon, and down here to Smallwood Cave they'd come. What she remembers is walking up here holding her daddy's hand. Said she remembers looking up, seeing the huge opening. She said that floor over there, she said it was a patchwork quilt of colorful blankets where all the ladies had spread out a picnic. And she said that's what Smallwood Cave looked like every Sunday afternoon she could remember until... Joseph Boulder showed up. He wandered in here, bought the place, called the Civil War cave, put sidewalks, gift shop, walked over there, told all the picnic and families they was going to have to pay to use the cave. Wasn't popular with the locals after that, I guess you could be right. Now, the furthest wall you see in the back there is 450 feet inside the open. We'll go 100 foot beyond that, but even then we're not going to the dark. It's hard to get the dark in our cave because of all that light coming in. That's why we got all the green in here, too. We got green formations. Now, we got moss growing on rock. Rock used to be moss. Moss is going to be rock someday because we're in a cave. 
Water flows through here, turns everything into a cave formation, layers up over time into what science calls tufa. And these are some of the larger tufa deposits you'll find in North America, right here in the opening of this cave. There's somebody peeking at you. Yeah, it's all bad. Yeah, <laughs> they'll peek out. You know what? They're fast. They're a noisy lot. Squeaking, squawking, <laughs> going on. Yep. Yeah. You can go ahead and wave at him if you want to. <laughs> oh, there he is. There's, there they're waving back up there. <laughs> yeah. That's the big browns. They're the babies this year. They're getting big enough. They're hanging around trying to find a place to move. Mom might have thrown them out. Did you ever get thrown out of your house by your mom? <laughs> you don't want I still feel them. Oh, okay. Both oh. of us, actually. Oh. Very good. That's good. Did you know that's good? Go I'm sorry. You know what? I saw you all go and I ignored you, didn't I? I was going to get, I'm old, so you got to bear with me. Thanks for being patient. What was your question? Very good. You know what? That, you know what that means? You fit right in here. <laughs> Isn't that neat to know? You know what the old timers, they didn't dare tell anybody they was part Indian. You know why? It was illegal to be a native and living in Missouri. Now, here in the Ozarks, folks never paid attention to that. You know what? Everybody just kind of ignored it. And... Some of my favorite old timers, they were Indian. There wasn't much doubt, but they'd always say they were Italian or something. <laughs> <laughs> they just did what it took to get along. You know what? Sometimes it's best to just not say things. Now, oh, the green here. That's called tufa. All right, the sun. You know what? This cave. We had that marker tree points east. Couldn't be the place where the Osage would come to talk to God. Maybe marking a Wakan site. Well, Schoolcraft had a name, too. In his journal, he wrote, I called the cave Winoka. Footnote said Osage were underground spirits. So we asked the Osage what that meant. And they said, don't know. It's not one of our words. Well, probably somebody told somebody that the Osage called this cave something. And then somebody told somebody. And then somebody told Schoolcraft. You know what? We've all played that game. Kind of hard to get the right name. When you start going between languages, things get mixed up too. Now Cameron Kraft, the linguist for the Osage, he said more than likely the name that this cave would have been called would have been Wanake. That means ghost or spirit of the people, which would indicate a place where the ancestors may came to talk to God. And so we've got a tree, possibilities, we've got a name, and we've also got an event, the shortest day of the year. The Osage would always leave the Ozarks just before Christmas, the winter solstice. And, well, when that event occurs two weeks either side of that solstice, the sun drops below the lip of our cave right here. It faces south. Sunlight comes in here. It'll strike the point of this rock. And when the sunlight hits the water, when our stream's flowing, well, you can see the reflection of the stream flowing on the ceiling of our cave beyond 400 feet. No wonder this place is always been invented here in such a special place. Now this plaque was put up here by the folks in modern times, and they thought it was special too. Remember Bolger? Upset the families. He died in a plane wreck just a couple of years after the place was open, and his family and everybody else walked away bad in the place. It sat vacant for years. Eventually sold on the auction block, wound up with the Harolds and the Bradleys there, and what they did, they gave the whole place to Central Assembly of God up in Springfield. This wound up being their church camp for 30 years. So for 30 years, well, I guess they came here to talk to God. You know what? Here in the Ozarks, things don't change a whole lot. People come and go, but it's not hard to figure out walking in here why so many people have thought this was such a special place. You need to share that feeling with the Osage, these folks, and maybe even folks long before the Osage. There's a sun lift carved on that formation back there are probably long before the Osage were ever known by that name. Now, spring and fall, we get our big rain. Water runs through here wall to wall, three and a half to four foot deep. Gets a little loud in here when that's going on. Other times, the stream of sea will up the still pools of red and water. All depends on how much rainfall we get and how much water flows out of our cave and springs here in the Ozark. <laughs> Now most of the water comes in that crack up there at the ceiling, and when it does, it flows down the wall, leaves mineral, and that is called flowstone right there. Our walls are decorated all the way to three-fourths of a mile on both sides. Crack up there at the ceiling, it's also why our cave's here, horizontal bedding plane. 
We think it might go a half mile both directions. We know it goes three fourths of a mile back. And well, you look at crap, it was all the way out in the valley out there. That void dissolved away, and basically a square mile of water hits the surface, goes through the top rock, when it hits the bedding plane, water gets funneled into this low spot, and that's what's carved our cave out from the ceiling down. And now decorates our walls year after year with glowstone, pickles, and cucumbers. That's what my wife says our stalactites look like. She's right, they really do. Now remember they're green because of the light coming in, moss grows in the layer. You'll see moss growing right back there, beyond that, the green's algae, beyond that, well eventually the algae fades out as the light does, but remember we're not going to go into dark on this tour. We're going to get close, but we're not going to go in absolute darkness. Now, the rock itself is basically sedimentary layers from an ancient ocean known as Cascadia. That ocean covered the Midwest, and everything was settled at the bottom, compressed into horizontal lines. We see the lines, and we've got the chemical makeup, too. We've also got fossils of the animals that swam in that ocean. Right there is the fossil of a starfish. And we have now found 17 of those in our ceiling, along with the parts of other ocean animals I'll show you along the way. Now next we're gonna walk out on this platform here. Out there, I'm gonna have the first group to walk over. I'm sending you to the corner. It's not because you're talking trouble, I'm just gonna take a picture over there. Well, everybody will stop right here at this line, and one group at a time, I'll take your pictures. Jack and Ken made a handful of cards, so it's going to take me a second to sort through. All right. Now, the first time I walked out here and glanced back at that open, I recognized the view there because, in fact, I didn't buy another cage book I had. Matter of fact, that was a picture on the cover of my favorite cage book. A guy named J. Harlan Bradstrow, who published in 1956, the book became known as the Caver's Bible. You all know what the title is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to count to 743, so I hope you're telling me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 743. <laughs> All right. Have to step over there. Next group, come on out here. Now, for the cover picture of that book, Brett stood over on the green slope of Tufa on the right hand side there. He posts standing there with his caving dog by his side. One, two, three. Very good.